Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Stewing33 Plays Player Unknowns Battlegrounds. My name is Stewing33, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at Player Unknowns Battlegrounds. Hopefully, we can have a good day today. Really, like, genuinely hoping that it will be fine. And, uh, yeah, should be fine. Should be good. We'll see. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Um,. Yeah, so last time, if you remember, we were up on that good that good perch, and I got a little loot crazy and a little kill crazy and jumped down and got myself murdered, um, which is on me. Uh, you know, I, I could I could have had that a little bit better, and I just fucked it up, which is fine. I mean, shit happens. Uh, <laughs> but um, hopefully we'll be able to work that out. Better this time. I mean, we're doing fine, generally speaking. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the timer. I was like, it went from like 32 to 12 to 9. <laughs> it was very weird. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll do well this time. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't played any PUBG over the weekend. I was busy. My sister's getting confirmed in the Catholic Church this week, or in like April or something like that. And she asked me to be her confirmation sponsor, which is weird because I'm not a very religious man. To the, the Buddhist teachings recently in like the last like two or three years. Still not a very good Buddhist, but I try. That's what matters. Um, but uh, she wanted to pick me, and I, you know, I was pretty happy about it. But it made my weekend busy, which is fine. I mean, you know, cool little things in life. My little sister's a, a dumpling of a girl. She's <laughs> it, it, like, not in like a mean way, she's just like kind of silly. And, She's a teenager. She's like 13. So she's trying to figure out her place in the world and all that other stuff. You know, you guys probably vaguely remember what it's like to be a teenager. Unless you are a teenager, in which case you guys know what it's like being in middle school and being an eighth grader and trying to figure out, like, you know, boys and navigate the social constructs of what it's like to be in a group of people that aren't just perpetually happy, you know? Because, you know, when you're, like, a kid kid, like, like a little kid, you're just, like, it, it's, the struggle is between your energy and the ability to do shit, right? Like, you know, for teenagers, it's a struggle between your energy and your ability to overcome changes in emotion that uh, perhaps are a little bit grander than you're used to dealing with. Which is difficult, to say the least. Got a backpack. Nobody else dropped into quarry with us, which is nice. Um, at least not that I saw. And I did make a, I did actually bother to make a sweep this time when I uh, landed, which is nice. But yeah, yep. But yeah, my uh, my mom raised all three: my brother, me, and my and my sister as uh, Roman Catholic kids, because that's how she was raised. And I don't know. My brother's still pretty religious. Um, I don't think he didn't really go to church and stuff like that, but I think if you asked him what he believed in, he would definitely say, like, you know, he's definitely a Christian, a Catholic man, if you will. His girlfriend, not so much. His girlfriend, not so much. She was raised uh, without religion, actually. Very interesting tidbit of information, I guess. I don't know. All that stuff's very interesting, because, like, in my opinion, you should just get out of people's way. If they're not hurting anybody, then there's no reason to get mad. You know, let them do whatever they want. But okay, good. I was like, there are still shotgun shells here. I was worried that there was uh someone else here, and they'd picked up a shotgun at some point. But there is not. Turns out it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I try to stay away from topics like that on the show, just because like a, I'm not versed enough. And, like, even having a benign opinion, like, I think everybody should be allowed to do whatever they want if they're not hurting people, can, like, make people angry, which is legit. I, I, I do get it. Um, I get why you would be angry about it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a programming thing. Um, it's the same reason people get angry, like, in the difference between uh, using spacebar or using the tab key when you program. It's just, like... Small things in your life that you think are correct, that you've been told are correct, that all of that stuff. And then if somebody else comes in and goes, well, I do it this way, 
So uh, it's easy to take that as a challenge on your core beliefs, which is, you know, fair. I think most people need to, like, calm the hell down. Just in general. This is not, not even, like, just religion, religious people. Just, like, people in general need to learn to calm the hell down. There's so much to life that, like, is worth your time and energy. And being angry just genuinely isn't. Um, as a dude who used to be angry all the time, it's just a waste of time and energy. It doesn't do anything. Um, the only time being angry does anything is if you're fighting. Because then it releases um, adrenaline into your system and allows you to ignore pain due to what it does to your brain chemistry. But, um, you know, people generally don't fight much anymore to my understanding um i barely did it like when i was a boxer i barely did it and that was like i was getting trained to do that to do so like you know, it's a little, sometimes you just gotta pay attention to what goes on in your life and have a better understanding of who you are as a person i think it's always good to be affirmed in yourself you know if you don't know well you'll get there or you won't. I mean, kind of that such as life to a certain point. Life is a series of things where you'll get there or you won't. And there's nothing wrong with either route. I just wish you all the best. I always sound like, I feel like I sound like Bob Ross when I talk a lot. Like, especially when I'm playing PUBG. It's like, there are large portions of time in PUBG where I just, I'm doing nothing. Um, I'm running around, looting stuff. I feel like I get onto these, like, Bob Ross-esque rants. Not rants, like... Dialogues, monologues, I guess, is probably the best way to to put it. Or, like, I don't know. I, I think a lot. It's, like, the principal thing that I do <laughs> every single day. And um, I find myself, you know, thinking about stuff that I've since gotten the better handle on in my life. Things like, you know, drive, ambition, you know, care, things like that. Stuff that people in college need to figure out and I kind of look back on it and I say to myself well you know we did this that and the other thing good but we did this that and the other thing bad right like um I kind of wish if I could go back in time and change the way that I handled handled a bunch of stuff I would have tried harder in college just like and like don't get me wrong I put a lot of effort in especially my freshman and sophomore year but my senior or my junior and senior year I sort of stopped I stopped focusing on bettering myself and started focusing on refining the things I already did well, because that's what I was told I needed to do. Um, I guess I wasn't told that. It was impressed upon me by my peers that if I wasn't good at something already, that I should just stop trying to be good at it and focus on the things I'm already good at. My professors less so. They, they encouraged you to uh, put in effort in all aspects, so that way you could... Um, you know, improve yourself across the board and become a well-rounded developer. Uh, I did not listen to them, which was a mistake. Um, I do feel like having experience in, in all aspects of game development is more important than being good at a particular aspect of game development. We're also going to wait inside this building, by the way, just for the red zone to go away. Um, you know, I, I feel like being well-rounded is, is more important than being focused. Um, being focused is important. Like, you should definitely have, like, a specialty, right? Like, I specialized in character and game design, right? Um, and production, I guess. I, I mostly focused on character and game design because production wasn't something that I was able to focus on while I was in school. Postgrad, yeah. I've definitely done nothing but do production the whole time I've been in postgrad. But um, I feel like if I had taken the time out to, like, force myself to learn how to do basic programming or force myself to, like, learn how to do things that I'm necessarily not good at, you know, and there are a lot of things I'm just straight out not good at in game design. You know, things like I'm not a good programmer. I'm not a very good artist. Um, although I'm not a very good artist because I don't have the patience to do art. That has nothing to do with, like, art as, like, a thing. Like, like the actual doing the thing isn't that hard. It's the, the patience to do it correctly is really what gets in the way a lot of the time. I feel like that's something that people forget, is that patience is a, a thing you have to learn. Ooh, a car. Uh, well, goodbye, crossbow. It's fun while it lasted. There were a couple cheek pads up where I found this crossbow, too. I should probably go grab those. Network lag detected. 
vertical. I should probably, yeah, they're up, like, up there somewhere. I should probably go grab those. The cheek pad helps out a lot with the fucking car. Got a 4X on our car, which makes it usable. Um, we only have level 1 armor and level 1 helmet, which is not so great, but hopefully we'll be able to deal with it. And I don't know. I, I've been, I've been using this more as, like, a, like a, like a, a base to, like, talk about stuff that's, like, on my mind. Um, and I feel like that's, like, good commentary for this kind of show. Um, it definitely buries out the fact that, like, a lot of the time I'm not doing anything in PUBG. I'm sort of just running around willy-nilly and all that. Like, you know, looting stuff and hitting, like, three or four buttons. And then, like, every now and then I get into a firefight where I stop talking for a minute. Deal with the firefight while I'm doing it and then come back to what I was talking about. I feel like that formula is working pretty well. You know, I could be grossly incorrect and perhaps that is not what people like but PUBG continues to be the most watched series on my channel nobody seems to be complaining so I mean I got that going for me at least you know it's definitely not and never a good idea to bank on the fact that nobody nobody's complaint nobody complaining is not necessarily an aspect of like you're doing something correctly ooh oh I thought that was a level 2 helmet I got excited damn it oh well um, you know, just because no one's complaining doesn't mean it's being done correctly. Sometimes people just are too apathetic to complain. Which is not good. You should, if you have issues with what I'm doing, you should let me know. I, I would prefer to change it if I can. Like, straight out. Cool. Alright, now we just need a tax doc. We got an M4. Rolling some of my favorite weapons in the game right now. We got a fucking 8x scope for our car here, which is kind of great. I'm gonna be honest. Should definitely go grab that cheek pad before I forget. We're inside the circle by a decent margin, so I'm not feeling obligated to leave quite yet. Not while there's still loot to be had. There's still like an entire like two areas I haven't like gone through at all. Um, the only thing I have to be careful about is people coming into quarry for looking for loot. Who perhaps are leaving from, like... Oh, I don't know. Primorsk, Ferry, coming over into quarry to look for loot. I don't know anybody that really does that, mind you. Um, as I understand it, I'm, like, literally the only person who ever willingly drops into quarry. Everyone else I know who does it, does it via, like, ultimate bravery. Or things like that. I mean, worst case scenario, we get roasted, and then this is a video of me talking into the camera about life lessons with Stealing 33, part 3. I think this is the third time I've done, like, this kind of <laughs> this kind of commentary. Normally, I, like, talk about the game and run around like a dingus, but every now and then, I, I just, I get enraptured with, like, a conversation piece, basically. I don't know. That's how I talk in real life. I, I get a lot angrier in real life, mind you. But, um... I don't know. I, I like to... I like to talk about important ideas. You know, there's there's always time for silly shit, right? Like... How to, how to put this without sounding pompous. In life, there's always time to talk about things that have no bearing. But, like... You know, if you don't take the time out to talk about things that have merit, that have, like, meat and weight to them, then, you know, you're kind of, you're doomed to never be able to do so, right? And, I, you know, I like to live my life with it having a little bit of weight to it. Just because, like, I don't know. I, I don't get to talk about this kind of stuff in my day-to-day -day life very often. You know, every now and then I, I, get, a, I get an opportunity to, like speak to somebody like one of my friends or somebody like that about um about something like this because uh, you know i have a, many friends in the game industry and they're all very interested in talking about what it's like to do x y and z um a, friend, a buddy of mine just texted me the other day was asking me about a job i had had previously i worked um I worked as a curriculum designer for a summer program of 
couple of years, uh, like a year ago now, something like that. Oh wait, no, God, that was this summer. Yeah, okay, this past summer I worked for a program, and they had me design their game design curriculum because uh, you know, I own my own game studio. I have a degree in game development. I worked as a game design teacher for a different summer program for a couple of years now. They upgrade. They like. I got, I was like the fastest promoted to director in like that program's history, things like that. Maybe not the fastest. Some people get hired in directly for it, but like I went from, I went from like an IT guy to assistant director in like a year and a half, which is like really fast, you know? Um, so they, they hired me to do their curriculum back up because they apparently had had, they had hired some guy to do it the previous year and he had done it all as like games as activism which is an important subject i'm not going to dispute the fact that it's an important subject but i will dispute the fact that a summer program is not the place to be doing games for activism most students who come to a summer program like that aren't interested in learning about games activism because they're not games activists they generally are I can also drop these crossbow bolts i don't need them anymore um, they're generally, you know, kids who are just interested in making video games. They want to make something. They want to make freaking Halo or Call of Duty. They're not interested in making a game about the plight of, you know, Western civilization and how consumerism is devouring mankind or something, you know. So they had me come in and redesign it. And it was fun. It was a good job. But he was asking me about it. And, you know, I got to talking about why that guy was wrong basically and why that's not a good method for doing that and you know I guess, I guess he's not wrong he just picked the wrong he picked the wrong subject for the place for the the audience that he was working with he was one of those designers that was focused on their own vision instead of being focused on what their audience wants and there are lots of designers like that you know there are lots of AAA designers that don't like that. Uh, look at the guy, Phil Fish, the guy who made Fez. So focused on what he wanted out of his game that he didn't bother to focus on what an audience would want. And then got upset when they didn't understand what he was getting at, basically. Um, which, you know, is never good. So it's always important when you're making a game to always think about what it is the audience is going to enjoy. Because your vision of it is never ever gonna translate well uh unless you make the game particularly it's just your vision you know you don't have and there's nothing else to it it's literally just uh, this is what i saw in my head when i thought of the game and which is fine there there, there are games that are there have room for that but if they have no substance then they're worthless like um art without art without an audience is it's just masturbation i think is a it's a quote if it's not, my dad said it at some point. He says a lot of weird things, actually. But, yeah, art without audience is just masturbation. And, um, I think that that's... That's very poignant. Is that a level 3 helmet? It was just a level 3 helmet hiding underneath that, that uh, that first aid kit. Alright, cool. Alright, I think we're pretty good on equipment now. So now we don't think we need a loot anymore. We're just gonna see where the circle shrinks. And use our 8x and this m4 to hopefully ride ourselves to victory here we'll check the rest of the buildings in this compound that we're in but depending on where the circle goes we'll have to make a decision about this normally i would hide in this building like if i was playing by myself and not for the show i would just sit here and not move because I know people are going to be coming from Primorsk Ferry. Like, they're going to come from the surrounding area into here. And I'm in one of the last good groupings of buildings that you could be in. So this is, like, a good place to lay a trap, basically. But we're not going to do that. We're instead going to keep moving here a little bit. I kind of just want to find a tax stock for the M4. It's the last thing we need. Like, we don't really need a level 3 vest. It's helpful, but not to the extent that, you know, it's critical. And we don't really need a frontal attachment for our car. It would be nice. But the car will 
do its primary function, which is murder people in one hit to the head without it. Um, got a lot of first aid kits. We have 11 first aid kits. We have a really good amount of healing right now. Um, which is nice. I'm just trying to decide what it is I want to do now. I'm also trying to think about like what the next topic of my discussion is going to be. Yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoyed that job. I enjoyed working in school in the, as a the curriculum designer. I, I'm really good at teaching. Um, I'm kind of a little, I'm a little gruff, to be honest, um, in person. It's different when I'm like talking to myself or talking via digital means. Like if I'm not in front of you, I, I have a different candor, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, I find myself in a position where let's go to this grouping of buildings over here. That might not be a good idea, but we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, like we can go back to the quarry, I guess, but... airplane dropped. I was like, it dropped its gift nearby, if I'm not mistaken. I was like, we can take up a position on the top of the hill, because I'm pretty sure this hill is going to end up being the circle, right? Oh, damn it. I had that on single. Ah, God damn it. Of course. Of course, that's what happened. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode, I guess. That episode was lame, but that's all right. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys like what you saw, let me know. If you guys want to see more, definitely subscribe to keep up to date. I want to post more videos. And if you really like what you saw, leave a like. Helps the channel grow. Helps me out a great deal. But, of course, with that, thank you all so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye!